worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of Him. The Lord declare His salvation. His righteousness have He openly shown in the sight of the heathen. Dearly beloved brethren, the Scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor choke them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy place, to hear His most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from the ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the device and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against the holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But Thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare Thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore Thou them that are penitent. According to Thy promises, declare unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The first lesson is written in the 60th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the ninth verse. For the coastlands shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from far, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favour I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually, day and night they shall not be shut. That men may bring to you the wealth of the nations, with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who oppressed you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you majestic for ever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breast of kings. And you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold, and instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze, instead of stones, iron. I will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever, the shoot of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time I will hasten it. Here endeth the first lesson.
the second lesson is written in the sixth chapter of the letter to the Hebrews, beginning at the seventeenth verse. When God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of His purpose, He interposed with an oath, so that through two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible that God should prove false, we who have flee for refuge might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He is first, by translation of his name, king of righteousness. And then he is also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, and has neither beginning of days nor end of life. But resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. See how great he is. Abraham the patriarch gave him a tithe of the spoils. And those descendants of Levi, who received the priestly office, have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brethren. Though these also are descended from Abraham, but this man who has not their genealogy received times from Abraham and blessed him, who had the promises. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. Here times are received by mortal men, there by one of whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Nephi himself, who received times, paid times through Abraham, for he was still in the lawns of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. Here end of the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. By the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Almighty God, who to wise men who sought him did manifest the incarnation of thy Son by the bright shining of a star, grant that, as they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, so we also out of our treasures may offer to him ourselves a living sacrifice acceptable in thy sight. Through him who for our sakes was born on earth as a little child, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto thee, as our reasonable service, hear us, we beseech thee, as we now come to thee in the name of Jesus Christ, and give us grace that we may dedicate ourselves wholly to thy service, and henceforth live only to thy glory, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given to us gifts differing according to the measure of thy grace, enable us each one, we beseech thee, to exercise the ministry which we have received of thee in the body of Christ with simplicity, diligence, and cheerfulness, that being bound together in brotherly affection and showing honour one to another, we may faithfully serve thy church and glorify thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O thou who art the mind of all creation, we remember to our comfort that thou hast in thy special care all broken, outworn, and in perfect minds. Give to those who live with them the understanding and loving spirit of Christ. Enlighten those who are tempted to laugh at such infirmity or regard it with shame. To all who are separated in this life by barriers of mental infirmity, grant the comfort of thy Holy Spirit, who with thee and thy Christ ever liveth and reigneth one God, well without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto Thee, 
and does promise that when two or three are gathered together, in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill thou, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.